Seven years ago, I wrote The Blue Economy. The name Blue Economy was actually decided by my wife, Katrina, in a discussion with Wendy Luhabe. We were the guests of Wendy Luhabe here in Johannesburg, and they said, but what you're talking about is not something new green. It's a completely different color. It's blue, and it's the earth. And yes, indeed. I mean, The Blue Economy, it's a second edition that was published a year and a half ago. The Blue Economy is focusing on the concrete initiatives that are being taken today worldwide based on science with a completely different cash flow analysis, with a completely different financials behind it. And it is so surprising that actually, I must say, the only business school in the world that has ever invited me to talk about it is Gibbs. But the last invitation was already 10 years ago. It is out-of-the-box thinking. It is not what the MBAs are normally taught. It is not what the financial analysts uh, are driving by. But it is what is happening, and it's completely going to change the way we look at business. And I'm quite convinced about it. By the way, the book is now 1.4 million copies sold, 42 languages. It is the best-sold economics book in modern time, in, the, in this decade. Okay? And it's not reported on the Financial Times and it is not reported on in The Economist. And that's all right, because if you know some French, you know what we mean when we say, pour vivre heureux, il faut vivre caché. We better be under the radar for a long time to come in order to be able to have our imprint clearly set up. We are, in the first place, a think tank. I have the privilege of having 3,000 researchers continuously feeding me with new facts new data, new science. And that is the wealth that I received because in 1994, the United Nations University and the Japanese government wanted me to help prepare for the Kyoto Protocol. And they gave me a think tank of 82 people and a T1 internet line. I had broadband video internet in 1994 in my office. And there were about a thousand people in the world who had that. And you can imagine, we liked play with the toy we got. The result is, though, that I was talking to Max Planck Institute in Germany. I was uh, talking to Lawrence Livermore in the United States. I was talking to the big labs of the world. About what? About zero emissions. About how we could have an economic model that responds to people's needs, that is regenerating the ecology, and is highly competitive. And everyone said, hmm, interesting. Basically, what is the blue economy? The blue economy, the first phase is we are innovative, not just innovative, totally disruptive. What we do is so disruptive. The industries that are affected by it just do not want to know about it. It is the typical effect of putting the head in the ground and activism doesn't exist, and you'll see some of the cases. Second, it is highly competitive, because we don't think green is the way to go. The green economy is the one where everything that's good for you and everything that's good for the environment is expensive. Who invented that economy? I mean, the good should be cheap. What is good for the environment should be cheap. And somehow we messed it all up. And that is why we really need to have not only disruption from the economic model, but also disruption in the green model. The green model will never work the way we've designed it today. Third, we need to have jobs. Every single project that we initiate has one clear objective, full employment. And we have achieved it in multiple pro projects in regions, not for a whole country, not for a whole continent. But in regions, we achieve full employment where we act. And that is something that is so far out of the box. People actually don't want to believe it anymore. We can eradicate unemployment. I think a country like South Africa needs to think like that. It's not just about how do we reduce the unemployment or how do we maintain the present level of 25, 27% unemployed, wasting generations. Finally, the starting principle is we use what we have. Instead of this economy where we believe we can get whatever we want, anywhere, anytime, at any price, we're saying our start of the economy is using what we have. And we do it with ethics. And I think the ethics at the core is very important. It is not good enough to do less bad. 
Polluting less is polluting. Stealing less is stealing. And I equate them at the same level. Thank you.